So you need music for a project. You're done with editing or maybe you're halfway there. And since you cannot use that stupidly popular song you like because, let's be honest, nobody's paying for royalties these days, what do we do? Well, I guess some of you would go to YouTube and type in something like free background music or background music for videos, music for tutorials. Heck, you might even be looking for some dreadful happy ukulele music. Get whatever comes out, put it on your timeline, crank up the volume because, hey, everybody likes happy ukulele music, right? And bam, the stuff is ready for delivery. But you would be wrong. Dead wrong. What does happy even sound like anyway? What if it's a doctor asking for the video? What's the sound of medicine or technology? Listen, choosing music for videos is not an easy task. If you really want to craft something memorable, then it might be wise to stop with the generic search terms and start treating the subject with due respect. Just ask yourself, is this track effective or is it just cool? Does it match the visual rhythm of my video? Does it complement or contrast the main subject? And come on, have you even looked at the waveform of the track? Like, really looked at it? Is it so overly compressed that you cannot hear the voiceover? Is it dynamic enough to be interesting? Will you Frankenstein the parts you like and spend precious minutes of your life stitching them together to make it sound half decent when there's tools that can do that for you in a second? All these questions hold a considerable level of importance, and so we'll go through them right now. Hey, I'm Marco, I'm a video producer and editor here at Envato Touch Plus, and today I would like to share with you some insights, theory, and a couple of technical aspects to consider when choosing music for your next video production. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because I like you, and I want you to succeed. Part 1. A theory on generic and an interesting music. How can anything acquire a generic status in life? It has to do with having no particular distinctive qualities of any kind. For example, if you've ever gone through an entire new playlist or record while saying meh, then you know the feeling. With enough time, everything sounds exactly the same at some point within a certain genre or style. But why? It's supposed to be new. Well, because you've heard it before. Because someone at some point tried to cash in on someone else's success through replication. But that's how genres and subgenres are created, you might say. And you would be partially correct. However, your brain knows the difference between a categorized piece of music and a shameless ripoff. Every now and then, a true artist breaks the mold so hard that it gains enough traction to become its own thing, only to be followed by a bunch of lazy copycats in charge of ushering the next wave of meh until you vomit. And that's pretty much how the music industry works. But in the realm of faceless, anonymous, all-purpose music, things are a bit different. Sure, you know what pop, rock and rap sound like, that's easy. But do you know what business is supposed to sound like? What is the appropriate tune for medicine? Or food? As you can see, I have two tabs open on my browser, one for YouTube and the other for my trusty Envato elements. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is typing in a fairly generic search term, which is business music for videos. Okay, there's an electric muted uh, delayed guitar, the melody, a beep in fourths, a reverse symbol announcing a section change, and some piano chords. Let's go and listen to this one. Electric muted delayed guitar over some positive piano chords. Ah, a reverse symbol. A reversed piano chord with a delayed muted guitar. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's go over to Envato Elements and I'll try to be as random as possible here. Audio jungle. Delayed muted guitar. Audio jungle. Ah, reversed piano chord announcing a change. Beat in fourths. What about this one? A reversed symbol. 
positive piano chords. Oh, that was soon. That was sooner than expected. Let's try happy. Fourths. It's upbeat, of course. Has kind of an indie feel. A music box effect. There's clapping also. Ah. What am I listening to? Claps? A music box? Fourth? Indie vibe? A reverse symbol, of course. Claps? Dreadful ukulele? Music box? Why not? Are we getting a reverse symbol? So? Yeah! <laughs> We're going big now. Tutorial music. Is this a delayed muted guitar with positive piano chords in the back and a reverse cymbal announcing a change? Audio surprise, surprise. Look, there's even clapping in this one too. Who's responsible for this? Not the creators of the tracks. They are just going with whatever's selling the most. I want to know who decided. This is what business is supposed to sound like. If the music industry is to blame for the meh in our casually sonoric lives, then we can point our finger to the advertising industry for this. Yeah, those sneaky salesmen and their fancy association techniques who for years have been creating countless jingles and specific sounds that instantly remind you of a brand or product. Defining how entire industries are supposed to look and sound. Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into the history of music and advertising, interesting as that may be, because the principle is the same. Once a good hit is landed, you can be sure the hive will follow. And as repetition ensues, so does the watering down of high concepts to the point of becoming generic. Nobody knows why it's supposed to sound like that. It just does. And so you need music for a project. You might just take one of these and put them on your timeline. Your client might be happy with the results. Deep down, you know what you're delivering. Part two, alternative mental pathways to choosing music. All right, so I got this song, I'll put it on my video and why the f am I getting a claim? Before we dive further into the topic, if you cannot tell the difference between no copyright music and royalty-free music, that's okay, I'm here for you. Royalty-free music means you purchase a track and then get a license for unlimited use. In other words, you can blast that tune as many times as you want and nobody will come knocking for money. It also doesn't necessarily mean you own the song. On the other hand, copyright-free music means public domain, like Dracula. Dracula has been around for so long that it can't be used, copied, and distributed by anyone without permission, much to many audiences this may. With that out of the way, do note that in most instances, you'll be dealing with royalty-free music as a creator. Unless specifically requested, you don't really want to use something that would be instantly recognizable. Like Beethoven's Fifth, for example. It would be too distracting. Yeah, of course, if you're big in advertising and have the money, you'll certainly use the latest meh hit on your commercial. But I am willing to bet that for many of you that is not the case. And remember, I like you and I want you to succeed. So in searching for the perfect track, one of the first things to consider is how complementary or contrasting do we need it to be. If we're going for the first, then we must ensure that it doesn't compete with the main objective of the video. For instance, if you're doing some editing work on top of a voiceover track, take the time to analyze the tone, rhythm, delivery style, and overall personality of the presenter. And make sure the core message is what comes through. Is this about cars or a spa? Is it a nail tutorial or a math class? Is the speaker young or old? All these things matter more than you think. Yeah, you could always use whatever and set the volume to minus 40, but it's better if you commit to using something that is present and yet remains unobtrusive. 
We are in Premiere Pro and I have several tabs open in here. Each of these is a sequence for a video that is currently available at the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. Now, what I want to do is to go through them and evaluate the decisions that were taken in order to select a music track. It is worth mentioning that each of these has a presenter. So let's go through them. What is cricket? Now, you may have heard the name and initially thought that they were talking about an insect or a sport, but then you heard the word vinyl and t-shirts and got a little bit confused. I know I sure did the first time that I heard it. So in this video, we're going to cover everything about what cricket is and what it may mean for you. Right off the bat, I can think of at least three or four keywords to describe the style that we're going for here. And those would be quirky, colorful, and chilled. I would say that this accomplishes exactly, or pins down exactly what we were talking about. Starts off really playful, chilled, yeah, moving on to chilled. And also the dynamics of the track work perfectly with the intro here. And what it may mean for you. Boom. Yeah, that's a title. And this is an example where we're complimenting. Let's go and check out the second one. Business plan PowerPoint presentations are your friend. With an impressive slide deck, you can win over even the toughest audiences. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to quickly make great business plan presentations. It's pretty clear what we're going for here. Something a little bit more serious, uh, something, uh, it's a business video. It's a tutorial on how to use PowerPoint. All right, so do we want a tutorial music? We got a beat, but it's not like the other beats that we heard, right? And also I think it is very important to notice that unlike the previous video, the dynamics of the track, at least for the intro, are not that exaggerated. It is rather flat, which is super useful with these kind of videos where you want to help people focus more on the explanation rather than the style of the video. This would be another case of complimenting. Let's check one more for complimenting styles. Hey, this is Marco and you're listening to Touch Plus with all the greatest hits on assets and everything you need to learn to get creative. Perfect. This is an intro for a roundup that I did. That's my voice right there. This is also for complimenting styles because what I was trying to project here was kind of like a DJ vibe radio presenter kind of thing going on. So it's very energetic and the music reflects that. It is also very much in line with the 80s style of visuals that we're seeing here. Now let's check how we can create contrast. Hi there, and welcome to this course 65 graphic design terms you should know. My name is Laura Kyung and I have been in the design field for 12 years. In all of these years, I have learned that design has its own language. Perfect. I want you to listen to it again, but without music and also without visuals. Hi there, and welcome to this course 65 graphic design terms you should know. My name is Laura Kyung and I have been in the design field for 12 years. It I believe you can anticipate what I'm going to say. In this case, Laura, our presenter, is a very serious presenter. However, the subject of the video does include a lot of color and style. There's also quite a bit of technicalities that need to be considered. Obviously, we're using visuals to complement it, but music in this case should also reflect it and I think should create contrast. This is a tutorial about coding. And so, as you could see with previous examples, it is key to learn to evaluate the waveform of the tracks. I can clearly see that the dynamics of this track are not too crazy, so that is good. If I was going for something a little bit more like in here, you know, like a punchy intro and a catchy title, I would go for something like this, where the dynamic is much more uh, in your face and noticeable. It's actually like telling a little story, right? But in this case, I didn't think that was too necessary. And so this is what I ended up with. Those 
popular UI framework, and regardless of if you ever plan on using it, you still need to try it out, even if it's... I just love this track, and I think it works really, really well. Now, you might be thinking, well, these are all just like chilled and, you know, downbeat vibes, and so that's super easy to do and look for. And to that, I would say, let me just put this generic tutorial music underneath and compare the effect. 3D text is a really exciting typographic tool that can help to create dynamic, bold... I'm, I'm not buying the excitement behind that statement. Exciting typographic tool that can help to create dynamic, bold and striking yeah. design. What about this other video? Ready to share your business plan with the world? The stakes are high. Whether you're presenting to clients or investors, you have to make a great first impression. Yeah, see, no, I'm already lost. This is something that I would listen to on every single presentation video from the last 10 years. Hi there, and welcome to this course, 65 Graphic Design Terms You Should Know. Boring. It is not exciting in the least. Now, if you look for generic, you'll get generic. If you've already made the effort to analyze the material as a concept, then don't just type in business music or happy music. Remember, the broader the search term, the broader the result. Say we are dealing with a couple at the beach. They are smiling. Cool. But is the situation more romantic than happy? This may be calling for a piano piece rather than, say, happy ukulele music. On the same train of thought, I think one of the most recurring sins is going for that tutorial music. You know, the one with the reverse piano chord immediately followed by a clean muted guitar with delay. The irony behind this is that the more we use it for legitimacy purposes, the faker it becomes. If you have no choice, fine. At least try to dig up some tutorial music with different textures. Part 3. Technical aspects to consider when selecting a track. Any person who considers themselves a good editor knows this universal truth. Sometimes the music does the work for you. A good track will tell you where to cut, where to start, and where to end. Having a feeling for rhythm is paramount to polish your work. Now, at this point, we could also talk about musical structure or harmonic progressions, but that is not really the point. I guess more importantly would be for you to develop a certain sensibility in the relationship that exists between visual rhythm and musical rhythm and how to combine them. When we think about rhythm in the editing process, we have to consider how element interaction on the timeline affects the end result of a project. Video, music, and sometimes voice work need to coexist and form a single harmonious entity to be effective. It's like chords. Mess up a note and you'll notice. And if you don't, your brain will. And if your brain doesn't, the public will. And trust me, they'll let you know. Your clients will let you know. Your friends will let you know. Your parents will let you know. Everyone will let you know. Think about this before laying your track down. In fact, think about it even before you start a session. Start editing in your head. So when you do go to look for something, you do so with costs. Now, one thing that can help you make informed and quicker decisions is looking at the waveforms. A healthy amount of space and clear progression of dynamics will usually work better for telling a story with music. A chunky snake, on the other hand, might be better for something more in your face and fast paced. If you are not mixing your music track with voiceover or on camera audio, then you're halfway there. But if the opposite is true, then think twice before using something that might compete too much for space. Otherwise, you'll end up burying it in the mix, making your chords stall and uninteresting. Part 4. A practical case and some useful tools for editing audio. We've gone through some theory, important technical aspects to consider, and even some historical facts. My oh my, what an interesting video this is. Alas, what we want to do next is to bring everything together and quickly tackle a real-life scenario where a client has asked us to create a thought-provoking introduction for their product. Now, this project includes a voiceover track by a presenter with a particular style, and I think the script goes very well with it. On top of that, I've already managed to do 
some work and complement the intro with some visuals that help to tell a little story before the actual announcement of the product. Let's watch! We live in the information age. From communication to shopping to finances and even to work, we digitally handle most of our interactions through websites and apps. And a lot of times it's on the little bitty devices that we have in our pockets. And even though the bulk of our information is digital, we need to supply that information to the websites and applications that we use. Now, as a developer, the thought of building a system to handle all of these different types of media is daunting. As we can see, there is a message about technology, digital communication, and the role the web developers play in that. I need a piece of music. And... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Boom, there it is. Done. We live in the information age. From communication to shopping to finances and even to work, we digitally handle... Wrong! Wrong! Yes, I used this track before to make a point, but does it really matter? Given how many sound and feel exactly the same. I'm not doing that. Let's get rid of this and go over to Envato and pick something else. So I'm here and I wrote down technological innovation. Why? Because it's not enough to only type in technology or tutorial or background music, or whatever. We went through that already, right? So what I want to do here is to put into practice everything we just went through. We're gonna look at the waveforms and listen to the tracks and give them an opportunity to speak for themselves. Audio jungle. No, we got our reverse cymbal and our delayed muted guitar. I don't like that. Reverse symbol. Yeah. No. Different but too obtrusive for my taste. Audio jungle. This could work. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about those voices. This is exactly what you need to listen to a little bit more than five seconds of a track, right? If you're already hooked on, give it a chance to breathe and see where it goes, because in this case, I think it has too much activity. Too many elements that would fight for attention with a voiceover track, and we do not want that in this case. We're not contrasting, we're complementing. No, no. Audio jungle. Mm. I like this. Yeah. Audio jungle. Not too easy. There is a progression. Audio it's jungle. It's building towards something. No reverse symbol. Let's go with this one. And we're back on Premiere Pro now, already tweaked a couple of things. I've given it uh, a little bit of punch in here for the intro, did some uh, level adjusting. Now let's listen to this again and compare. We live in the information age. From communication to shopping to finances and even to work, we digitally handle most of our interactions through websites and apps. And a lot of times it's on the little bitty devices that we have in our pockets. And even though the bulk of our information is digital, we need to supply that information to the websites and applications that we use. Now, as a developer, the thought of building a system to handle all of these different types of media is daunting. I think it goes quite nicely with the presenter's voice, with the message, the rhythm of the visuals as well, and with the script. This level of communication between elements is what we want to achieve. Ultimately, that is the goal. In this case, we're telling a little story for the product, and I think we managed to do it. Suppose you're close to striking the right balance between video, 
music and voiceover. The rhythm works, but it's still a bit too loud and the track is just a tad bit longer than necessary. What do we do? I'll tell you what I would do. I would start a proper audio mixing process. Because audio mixing is not just about faders. For this last part, we're gonna go over three quick tips that will help you save time and get better results with your audio mix in general. Now, this isn't going to be a full mixing class. There's tons of related stuff out there, but from a video production perspective, I think you'll find this useful. First, unless you're mixing 20 tracks, it's actually worth doing your mixing in program. What do we mean by that? Well, just do it on the editing software. Provided you are using one of the big three, either Premiere, DaVinci, or Final Cut, they all have the basic tools you need to handle your main three or four tracks, because let's be honest, it usually comes down to either uh, voiceover, on-camera audio, uh, music tracks, and maybe sound effects. But what I really find interesting about this is that you can actually load and stack up effects just like you would do on a DAW or a DAW, an audio editing software. In this case, Premiere has the audio workspace, which is where I'm currently at. And once you select it, the layout displays a little mixing board in here where we can load native and third-party effects like a gate, for example, which is super useful to tame noise, a parametric or graphic equalizer, compressors, de and even add effects to submixes or final mixes, additional compression, and of course, limiting, for example. So this way, there's no need to go back and forth between programs. Sure, you could use dynamic linking for Adobe Audition, just like you would do for After Effects, but what if you don't have it? The second tip I would like to share with you is learn to do the bare minimum. Like I said, mixing audio is not just about faders. So it is not enough to just crank one of these up and bring the other down. At the very least, you should be able to perform some basic cleanup on your track. The third tip is using the remix tool. Now, I'm terribly sorry, but this one applies to Premiere users only. The Remix tool uses AI to identify patterns and extend or shorten audio tracks with no perceived difference. Sometimes you have the right tune, like this one in here, but it's just not long enough or it's not short enough. So instead of just cutting and stitching parts and playing it over and over again to make sure the effects are seamless, you can just go to the audio workspace, select your track, and here over on Essential Sound, there's a little section called Duration. Once you activate it, it will instantly analyze your clip and uh, apply one of two methods for stretching your track. The first is Remix and the other is Stretching. What we want to use today is Remix. Now, I previously told the tool that my target duration was 2 minutes and 55 seconds, but in here you can just change it to whatever you need. In this case, for example, I don't know, 220. And it shrunk. But if we go back to the 255 that we need, we can see that these little saw tooth patterns are doing exactly what we would do manually. They're identifying parts on the track that can be pasted together and that work perfectly and seamlessly. Cool, isn't it? All right, all right, music is beautiful in every style, shape, or form. But maybe context matters? As creators, it is our job to develop ideas to their maximum potential. Of course, we need to make it worth our while. And in order to do so, I think it is important to develop a taste for these things, you know? Anyway, I truly hope you found this helpful. Do drop a comment and do not forget to like and subscribe to the Embato Touch Plus YouTube channel for more things like this one. I'll see you when I see you.